What is more important for a 10-year-old kid? To learn how to tie shoelaces or how to properly throw a hand grenade? To climb trees and have fun with friends? Or to become a tool of massive fascist propaganda? The Hitler Youth Program corrupted the innocence of a vast number of German children between 1929 to 1945. Welcome to Nutty History, and let's explore what it was like to be part of the Hitler Youth Program. Hitler's vision for Nazi Germany involved grooming children from the get-go. The top leadership of the Nazi government saw these young kids as future leaders of the Gestapo and the Third Reich, and that is why Adolf Hitler started programs such as Young Volk and Young Model as early as the 1920s. And when Hitler assumed power in 1933, he started pushing these programs under the name of Hitler Youth all over the country. The number of kids enrolled in the Hitler Youth program rocketed from about 100,000 to 2 million in the year 1933 alone. In 1936, Hitler made the program mandatory, which raised the enrollment to over 5.5 million. Youths who were discovered not to have joined would be sent to re-education camps and have their parents fined and imprisoned. On the other hand, the oblivious and innocent kids saw youth camps as a fun social activity. They knew no better, just like in the movie Jojo Rabbit. Millions of German kids back then were brainwashed with fanaticism and radicalism in these camps. Alphonse Heck and Gerhard Richter described their experience of the Hitler Youth no different than being part of the Boy Scouts. That's ironic because, to make way for Hitler Youth, Hitler and the Third Reich banned Boy Scouts in Germany. Deep down, members of the Hitler Youth knew that they were a cult dedicated to Hitler. The former members mentioned that the rituals were painful and borderline traumatic, but the reward, laced in propaganda and peer pressure, influenced the minds of the innocent teenagers. Some of the former participants mentioned post-Second World War that the Hitler Youth program was seen as a leg up in society. Getting a coveted dagger as a symbol of graduating from Jungvolk to Hitler Youth was a matter of pride and recognition for them. When the Second World War began in 1939, it casted a shadow on the Hitler Youth program as well. The Jew-hating propaganda replaced the Nazi patriotic propaganda, and things became not so different from what Jojo Rabbit satirically portrayed. German preteens at these camps were taught to believe in Aryan racial superiority, tormenting Jews, and hate the Allied nations for threatening German freedom. The idea of innocent camping trips and bonds of friendship was long left behind as rifle fire training and hand grenade launching replaced them. Eleven-year-olds were fed grand tales of great German destiny while being prepared to indoctrinate into the Third Reich. Every boy who participated in the Hitler Youth Program had his records of punctuality, orderliness, reliability, subordination, aggressiveness, and physical talents maintained by the leaders of the program so it could be used by army psychologists in the future. Meanwhile, girls collected tin foil and warm clothes for soldiers and received lessons on farming and cooking and cleaning and singing, swimming, gymnastics, and running, activities that might sound pleasant enough but were designed to keep their bodies and their homes in good physical shape so they could attract a mate and raise children in the Nazi ideology. As the war developed, it became clear that the Hitler Youth's real goal was to create more soldiers for the Reich. Children who had been manipulated with the Nazi ideology for years made obedient, fanatical soldiers. Eventually, those soldiers became younger and younger. Starting in 1943, all boys, 17 and older, were forced to serve in the military. In 1945, the desperate Nazi leadership began pulling younger boys out of school and sending them to the front. Just like Jojo and his best friend Yorkie fighting to defend Berlin in a movie, these inexperienced children were essentially conscripted for suicide missions. And if they balked, they were executed. Those who survived faced harsh treatment at the hands of the Allies who captured them. Gladly, Hitler Youth was disbanded after the war, and the only legacy of the group is that it is considered one of the most chilling facets of the Nazi regime. Thanks for watching Nutty History.